What do you do when you have a BMW E46 with a naturally aspirated engine and you got some money for mods? You put it into the suspension. So I think I was smart. I bought an E46 BMW with the ZSP package. That means that I have the sport suspension. So I thought to myself, hey, I don't really need to buy a set of coilovers or lowering springs or Bilstein shocks right now because this suspension setup is actually pretty good, and it is. So what I decided to do was put some money into sway bars. I got a set of Hotchkiss, I think I'm saying that right, adjustable sway bars, front and rear, with the adjustable end links. So I thought, why not adjust the sway bars because that's where I'm getting a little bit of my issues, is a little bit of body roll. Front and back isn't too bad, the ride height is good, it's very comfortable, but I thought, I kind of want to control the lateral motion of the car a little bit more. So I put some Hotchkiss sway bars in and I can wholeheartedly and fully recommend them. There is a massive difference. Turning corners, you really don't feel the body lean nearly as much. I also have a Saab 9.3 Aero, which has lowered sport suspension from 2006. It's a quick car, really good suspension system. The chassis isn't nearly as good as a BMW to begin with, but I put Kona Yellow adjustable dampers in that. That thing can't even hold a candle to this car. So I put these sway bars in. They were actually quite easy to install. The adjustable end links are fantastic. You can really change the location of the sway bar relative to the control arm in the rear. And message. And I also really liked the mounting plates that they gave you for the bushings. I'll show you some pictures, or I'll show you a picture, of a comparison between the old front bar, old front bar in this car, and the new front Hotchkiss bar. You can see the difference. Totally different size, design, strength, obviously. I believe the Hotchkiss bars are hollow. I'm not sure how that has any bearing on uh, long-term rigidity. I can't comment on that yet, but I can certainly tell you that they don't weigh that much for how big they look. The coolest part about the Hotchkiss sway bars is that they're fully adjustable. You've got several points on the front and rear to tighten them or loosen them, and that allows you to start doing like proper real chassis tuning, which is great because if you just have, if you don't have coilovers and you just have a one ride height and you have regular sway bars, you're very limited on how you can tune the chassis if you're actually concerned about real performance driving. So with the Hotchkiss bars, you can at least try and stiffen up the front or the rear and play around with that to get the understeer, oversteer characteristics that you want for track driving or for racing or for autocross. When I first installed them, I noticed an immediate difference. And the reason that I noticed an immediate difference is because of the first downside of Hotchkiss sway bars, or I suppose any super stiff sway bars in any car. When I drove out of my driveway for the first time, I drive out in a little bit of an angle and immediately I noticed a huge back and forth thunk feeling. There wasn't any noise, no knocks or anything, but I noticed a huge difference in the way the car went over bumps. Now this definitely has a play on back roads like this one, where you can really feel the undulations in the road. If you dip one tire down, since the, the sway bars are so strong, it connects both tires together and you feel that kind of drop in the side of the car laterally across the entire chassis. So I thought that that was a little bit of a downside for me personally. It's almost like you sacrifice some high speed stability. Okay, so here is a look at what the car looks like um, well within the speed limits on a, a regular corner. You can see that there isn't actually that much body roll, visual body roll. Remember, this is the stock sport suspension, and to be perfectly honest, I think that the suspension in this car is actually quite worn out. I've been planning on replacing it at some point, but it's good enough now, it doesn't really bother me. So take a look, and you will see there. You can notice that the car is not doing a big old Cadillac lean, which is really nice. Changing directions abruptly back and forth 
you can really notice the stiffness. There is still a little bit of body roll. If you were to compare it to something with a really low center of gravity and stiff suspension, like a Scion FRS or a Supra VRZ, you would notice this still moving back and forth a little bit. But it's not something that is, is, is bothersome or an issue in terms of handling. The chassis in the V46 is already, already fantastic for handling. So this is a, just a complete addition and I would completely recommend it. So if you'd like, you can take a look at some track footage here. It's difficult to see because I only have footage from the inside of the car, but you can tell that the car does handle well and everything is fine. the front bar set at the softest setting and the rear bar set at the softest setting. I think that I'm going to stiffen up the rear bar for my next track session to see if I can induce a little bit more oversteer. It just seems like the car wanted to plow a little bit and if I had a picture, I don't think I do, of my front tires after that track session, you can see that I was really having to focus on trail braking to try and keep the weight over the nose of the car. My driving technique is by no means perfect, but I did notice that there was a difference um, in the understeer oversteer characteristics. Something that I'm excited to try out for those track junkies and those who are really into suspension tuning, I've heard, I don't know if anyone can substantiate this, I've heard that the suspension geometry in an E46 is set up such that if you put a stiffer front bar, you're going to actually increase front end grip because there's a point based on the geometry of the suspension when you get too much suspension travel you actually lose a little bit of negative camber and the lock last of, the lack of negative camber results in less front grip and therefore more understeer so i'm going to try a stiffer rear bar first see how that handles and then i will do a stiffer front bar and see if it's a completely the opposite. I'm sure the stiffer rear bar is going to give me a pretty good idea of what's how it's set up, but we'll find out, I guess. So I would completely recommend the Hotchkiss Sway Bars. I have nothing bad to say about them. They're incredibly well built, and you have my vote for those. Stay tuned for more reviews like this, as well as DIYs, and a coming comparison between this car and another car that I think should be a rival to it. Yeah.